Okay, so we're beginning chapter 11, and our first learning objective is segment reporting. And to sort of get you to visualize what a segment is, consider what I've done on the uh, left side of the screen here. I have a company that has two divisions, Division A and Division B. And the company can generate a report, one for Division A, one for the Division B, and one for the company as a whole. But it can also take Division B and break it out into the two products that Division B produces, Product C and Product D. So Division B is a segment of the company. Product C and Product D are segments of Division B. We can further take Product C and break that down into sales territory, East and West. So West would be a segment of Product C. East would be a segment of Product C. You can then take West and break that out into sales that occur online versus sales that occur in store. So these would be considered separate segments as well. How deep we go into the company, how far down we segment, depends on the type of information management needs. The further down you segment, the finer the granularity. When I say granularity, I mean the finer the detail of the information you get. But there comes a limit to how far you want to segment before it no longer provides any extra useful information. So this is really just what segments are all about. These are segments. <clears throat> so what is segment reporting? Well, segment reporting uh, is done in contribution format. We create statements for each segment in a contribution format. And it basically follows the contribution format we're familiar with except when we get to the fixed costs. So let's cover what's obvious. We start with revenue. And revenue, let's just say we're doing company A and division A and B. The revenue for the company as a whole is the sum of division A and divisions B revenue. Minus the variable costs. So the total variable costs are the sum of the variable costs for division A and division B. And remember, revenues minus variable costs equal our contribution margin. So we have that. So far, so good. Now, we subtract our fixed costs. But notice what I've done here. I have this new word in front of fixed costs, traceable fixed costs. Traceable fixed costs are fixed costs that you can trace to a specific segment so that it's, we, we, it'll still be a fixed cost of the total company, but the fixed cost itself belongs to a specific segment and not the other segment. The existence of segment B here has a fixed cost that belongs to segment B. If segment B disappeared, that fixed cost would disappear. That's what we mean by traceable fixed costs. So we want to trace everything we can to the proper segment. So once we subtract traceable fixed costs, we get a new word. We get the segment margin. That's as far as we can go with the segment statements. From that, we have some common fixed costs, fixed costs of the company as a whole that are not traceable to either segment A or segment B entirely, but that if segment A or segment B disappeared, this fixed cost wouldn't disappear. So we can think of the CEO salary. Here for traceable fixed costs, we can think of division A's manager's salary and division B manager's salary. If division B weren't there, that salary wouldn't be incurred. So from our segment margin, we subtract our common fixed costs. Then we get the operating income. So you can see on the contribution format income statement, everything is the same until we get to fixed costs. We break down fixed costs in terms of traceable, traceable to the segment. We'll come up with a segment margin uh, and a total segment margin for the company. Minus our common fixed costs. These are costs that cannot be traced to any segment for our operating income. So let's have a look at what that actually looks like with some numbers behind it. Okay, well, on the screen here, I have a segmented uh, contribution format income statement. And we can see our total company column over here. And the two segments we have, we have divisions, business products division and consumer products division. And we can see that we have sales, 500,000, broken down into 300 and 200. So we see that the, the individual sales numbers from each of the divisions add up to the total company. 
Then we subtract our variable expenses. We have variable cost of goods sold, other variable expenses, which give our total variable expenses across. We have 230000 for the total company, made up of 150 for business products, 80 for consumer uh, products. To arrive at a contribution margin for each of the divisions and the company as a whole. Now from that, notice what's taken off. Traceable fixed expenses first, and the traceable fixed expenses can come out of each division. And once we do that, we have our divisional segment margin. Notice that that is where the segment report ends for the segment. So, well, that's as far as we go. From the total company, though, we then subtract the common fixed expenses not traceable to the individual divisions of 85000 So this 85000 would still exist even if you eliminated one of these divisions, would still pay that 85. That's why it's called common. It's common to all the divisions for an operating income of 15000 Now, to demonstrate how it can be broken down even further, let's just scroll down a bit. And here we are, we've taken the consumer products division, just that division, and we've broken that down into two other segments by product line. The consumer products division breaks down into computer animation and into computer games. And again, we start the same process again. Our sales, less our variable expenses, give us our contribution margin. From our contribution margin, we have traceable fixed expenses. Now, when we left uh, the computer products division, notice that we were able to trace $80,000 of fixed expenses to the consumer products division. However, once we get down to the consumer products division, the segments within the division of that $80,000, we can really only trace $70,000 to the specific segments within that segment. And we see that $10,000 of the $80,000 is common just to the existence of the consumer products division. So again, of the 80,000 that we were able to trace to consumer products, 30,000 we can, we can trace to computer animation, 40,000 to computer games, but there's 10,000 that we cannot attach to either one, which means if computer games disappeared, that 10,000 would still exist. And of course, we can see the arrow here from computer games comes down and we can then break down computer games into online sales and retail stores. And we go through the same process again, but notice again, we were able to trace $40,000 of fixed expenses to computer games. However, once we get down into finer detail of the 40,000, we can only trace 15 of that specifically to online sales and 10 specifically to retail sales. So it has 15,000 of common expenses. That means that if we get rid of the retail stores, that 15,000 still stays. But we know of the total $40,000 in traceable overhead at the higher level, 40,000 traceable fixed expenses, if we eliminate retail stores, we could get rid of 10,000 of that 40,000 because that is traceable just to the retail stores, but 15,000 would survive. So that's a good, uh, a good start, and we're following along the example in the book as well, but that's a good start to show what the segmented income statement would look like, broken down into traceable fixed costs and common fixed costs. Again, let me stress, that's the big new introduction here, is that we're breaking down the fixed costs into two big categories, traceable and common. Music